So Jeff, you have an incredible resume as a serial entrepreneur and a software engineer spanning across various industries. Can you share with our readers some of the key milestones in your entrepreneurial journey? Um, sure. The uh, first one was I started out, I got a software engineering degree uh, just because jobs were there and paychecks were there, but I didn't actually enjoy it for me personally. And I quit after only a few years. Um, and so my first entrepreneurial milestone came when I was broke, 20 something years old, unemployed, in an airport, uh, bought an airline ticket to see a mentor. And it took uh, more than an hour, an hour and a half to check in. Back then, you had to check in with a human to get your boarding pass. <laughs> and I missed the flight. Um, and I was very frustrated. I lost all the money in the airline ticket. And again, when you're broke and, you know, unemployed, that's a big loss. Mm -hmm. um, so that Friday is when I start really kind of did one of my first startups because I said there has to be a better way to check in. And uh, so that first startup, we designed the kiosks. When you go to an airport now and you check yourself in at a kiosk, that was uh, our first invention. Nice. So I started a company building those, no idea what I was doing, and eventually uh, figured out how to... Uh, uh, sell it and build a company around it. And, and uh, our first company was, was happened to be very successful. That was the first milestone. Nice. Probably another major one in there was a failure. Uh, because at the time, I thought, why do you have to drive to the mall if you have a computer? You can buy stuff on this new thing called the internet. <laughs> uh, failed because I was too early and people didn't know what the internet was and they didn't trust it and they weren't about to put their credit card into a computer system and send it out to the world. That was an important milestone because it was a fail. But the learning for the fail was, um, that's really where I learned to stop listening to my own ideas and to go immediately. Like we were thinking housewives with young kids that it's a hassle to take to the mall would use their computer to buy something. So the lesson learned from that fail was as soon as you have an idea, go out and ask the people that you think are going to use your product immediately, not later. And those housewives would have told us they were never going to type their credit card into a website back then. And we would have never wasted all that time and money. Next right. milestone was probably uh, when we uh, launched Priceline.com. Obviously, Priceline was a, uh, turned out to be a very successful startup. Um, but I was, uh, you know, at the beginning, there was only a very small group of us starting it. Um, then uh, I did um, some ventures, some startups outside of, uh, and people outside of the U.S. know the company is Booking.com, but it's the same company, Priceline and Booking. Mm -hmm. I took a break from tech um, and got into entertainment and media, really just to learn how, uh, you know, the marketing machine of the music and film and television industry are so good at marketing. Um, so I took some time in the music business. Um, we produced concerts and tours during the pop era. We worked with everybody from NSYNC, Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, Elton John, um, et cetera. Uh, then we got into the film business um, to learn about filmmaking and storytelling and messaging. And we were Fortunately, successful there as well. We made some independent films that were distributed uh, pretty much worldwide in theaters. Um, then took a little foray into television, where we've actually won two Emmys for content we've been producing on what success looks like for the next generation. So I got a chance to learn the business side of music, film, and television. Then I did one more internet company. Um, which was a big milestone. We did a company called ubid.com, which became one of the largest auction sites on the entire internet. Took that public as well, did another IPO. And I was the CEO of a public company and back to the place where I hit a point where I said, uh, that was kind of the end of my entrepreneur career. Uh, mm -hmm. That's eight startups, uh, a couple of failures and a couple of successes that were big enough to cover the failures. So that's the, those are the key points. Wow, that's that's the whole article right there. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd just keep rolling and give you all the, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, that's awesome. In our June issue, building the modern entrepreneur is a central theme for our issue. 
In your opinion, what are some of the key characteristics and skills that aspiring entrepreneurs should develop in today's rapidly evolving business landscape? Okay, that, that, that's a great question. Um, one of the first ones is empathy, which literally I, I just highlighted in my failure, right? Empathy is putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and trying to figure out what they think and feel instead of being blinded by your own brilliance, right? You have a great idea. You know it's great because you think it's great and you're so smart. And in fact, you're not. You're never as smart as you think you are. And your opinion doesn't matter. The only thing that mattered in that example I gave you was the stay-at-home mom's opinion. And I wasn't one and I didn't ask any. And I didn't do that till after I failed. So empathy was very helpful in the Priceline days when we were building these companies. I spent times where I went to grocery stores uh, to talk to travelers and discount stores, to talk to people, not sell them something, just chat with them about, about the business, what we were trying to do and, and see if they even, if it even resonated with them. So empathy, learning to listen and learning to put yourself in somebody else's shoes is extremely important. And, and then the, uh, probably the other one that's worth covering is recognizing that le real leaders don't create followers. They create other leaders. Your job as the leader is not to tell everybody what to do just because it was your idea or you own the company. Your job as the leader is to go find people smarter than you, convince them to come join you, and then take good care of them so they don't leave. Yeah. They literally have to get out of the way and let people smarter than you grow your company. And that's where most people get stuck. They tell me, I'm working more hours than I've ever worked and my company's not growing. And I have to tell them that's because you're in the way. It's not you working more hours. It's you realizing you have to surround yourself with people smarter than you. Go get those people and then get out of their way and let go. And people can't scale their company until they can let go of control. And that's where most of them get stuck. Wow, that's so amazing. Um, I'm just excited to be the first to get all the gems before anybody else. I get <laughs> Diversity and inclusivity have become really essential aspects of entrepreneurship. How can entrepreneurs foster diversity within their teams and ensure equal opportunities for all, ultimately driving innovation and success? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's another great question. And um, the answer is that you actually have to do the work, right? Diversity and inclusion is important. Um, as, a, as a CEO, when it was big decision time, I used to go, I used to call these listening tours. They'd say, where are you going on a listening tour? When are you going to make a decision when I get back? And I would go talk to 10 different people in my company of all different types and, and listen to everybody's opinion. And then I would blend the input from 10 completely different people to get a way better answer than if I just made a decision. So listening tours, if you're listening to two people who are exactly alike, you're gonna get the same answer twice. If you're listening to a diverse and inclusive mix of opinions and suggestions, you get a way better answer when you're done. But diversity and inclusion requires effort. You have to go out and build a team that is diverse and inclusive. And when you as a leader are in the decision-making process, you have to do the extra work to go collect input from a diverse set of people, not just the couple of people that are right next to you. So it's really important. You get way better answers, but you have to do the work or it's not gonna happen. I hear that, do the work. Of course, we know innovation plays a vital role in the success of modern entrepreneurs. How do you stay ahead of the curve and continuously innovate in today's competitive business landscape? Okay, so I actually have a technique that I created for that. Just something I, I the, this word I'm going to tell you is just a word I made up to do this, but I call it info sponging. And that's just my term. I take 10 or 15 minutes out of every day. Literally, this is a habit, uh, uh, you know, that, that, uh, a practice that I do, but it's something that, that's become a daily part of my daily routine. Every morning before I start work at my company or my industry, I take 10 or 15 minutes, minutes and I read one article or watch one video or talk to one person. But basically what I'm trying to do is I learn one new thing a day outside of my industry every day. So I'm not in, for example, medicine. But one morning I might wake up and, and read about this cool new technology that, that 
uh, is being created for surgeons. Why am I reading it? I don't know. What I'm doing is absorbing knowledge from all over the world in all different industries so that I can figure out how to use other people's good ideas in my industry. So that's how I stay ahead through this info sponging. And that's it. I challenge myself to learn one new thing every day. It just takes 10 minutes to learn, learn one new thing. Then I write down one sentence about what I learned. And most of the time, at, the, at that moment, I have no idea what it means. But if you keep collecting pieces of knowledge, like pieces of a puzzle, eventually the pieces start to fit and you start to see patterns. And you're the person that sees new ideas coming before anyone else in your industry does. So that's how I, I focus on continuing to be as innovative as possible by not spending all my time only working on my company and my stuff. Nice. That's awesome. So lastly, as a successful entrepreneur, you have experience in scaling businesses and fostering innovation. What strategies or approaches do you recommend for entrepreneurs who are looking to build and grow their ventures in a sustainable and forward-thinking manner? But literally, that's what my book is. I don't, we wrote the book Scale because there are so many things that you have to do. There's seven areas, and it's basically the seven things you have to do. Uh, it's the answer to your question. There are seven main functional areas and functional things that you have to get right to scale a company. I, I wrote it with a friend of mine, David Finkel, but um, we wrote a book called Scale that explains here's the list of things you have to go do if you want to grow a company. And there's seven functional areas, including what you said, from finance to talent and HR to marketing and messaging uh, to processes and procedures. It's, it's a lot, but it's after spending years of having been built several multi-billion dollar companies, people said, what did you do? And so that's what scale answers. Okay, so let me write that down because I'm getting that book today. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so um, I will say that